Welcome to the MindLab Manticore's Ferris Limits tutorial. Today, we're going to take a look at the Ferris Limits. The Ferris Limits is what classifies targets as Ferris or non-Ferris. It's based on the conductive properties of each target. The Ferris Limit preset is local and won't affect the other detect modes. If you save a custom Ferris Limit profile, this can be accessed in the Ferris Limit setting in all of your detect modes. Ferris limits are similar to iron bias, but gives you a lot more control. It allows you to accept desirable Ferris targets or reject difficult Ferris trash. The Ferris limits are disabled in single frequencies. To enable the Ferris limits, you must change your frequency to multi-IQ+. In the Ferris limit setting, you have two options, preset and custom. On your ID map, you will see the upper and lower Ferris limit. Upper Ferris limits, this controls the classification of most iron objects like screws and nails. By increasing it, it will drop this line down closer to the center line and classify more targets as iron. This will result in less iron falsifying, but this will reduce the target separation's performance. By opening it up and lowering the upper Ferris limits, this will move the line further away from the center. This will classify less targets as iron, and it will falsify more on iron, but increase the target separation's performance. Lower Ferris Limits The Lower Ferris Limits deals with flat iron objects such as bottle caps and sheet metal. By closing the lower limits, moving them closer to the center line, will classify more flat iron objects completely as iron, but this may also reduce depth on some deep targets in mineralized ground, particularly low to mid conductors. Decreasing or opening the lower ferrets limits, moving them further away from the center line, this will classify fewer flat iron objects as iron, but may also improve the depth on some deep targets in mineralized ground. Ferris limits audio. In all metal, anything within the gray area will have a ferrous tone. Anything not in the gray area will have a non-ferrous tone. This also depends on how you set your target tones. When you're not in all metal, targets within the gray area, you won't hear the target tone or have a target ID or a ferrous indication, but you will still see it on your 2D ID map. The Ferris Limits Preset the preset is designed to deal with the most common scenarios. In some cases, you may want to reject or accept a desirable ferrous target. As an example, here in Canada, our modern coins are composed of ferrous steel. Most of our steel coins appear in the same area in the upper ferrous limits. This can be adjusted and leads us to creating a custom ferrous limits profile. Let's edit the ferrous limits to accept ferrous coins. I have some Canadian coins here. They're steel core and nickel plated. We're going to listen to them. They, they come up as iron and I want to modify the ferrous limits to be able to hear them. Now keep in mind, I'm going to be swinging these by hand. They're not stationary in the ground. So this will probably affect a target trace that you see appearing on the screen. It may be a little more sporadic, but for the purpose of the video, I think it's easier for everyone to see the screen this way. 60s. Red line underneath, 68. Okay, so it seems that our steel core coins are coming into the 60s range in the upper ferrous limits. So let's modify that. Go into settings, go into menu. Let's go up to the ferrous limits. Now in the ferrous limits, you have presets and you also have four customizable programs. Now the presets, you can access these just by hitting the edit button. By default, you're in the upper preset. You can change the value by hitting the left or right arrows. By going down, you can access the lower preset. Now I'm going to keep these presets, 9 and 4. I'm simply going to copy them over to custom 1. There we go. Let's go back. Go into preset. Go in there. Do the same thing for the upper preset. I'm going to copy the upper preset to custom one. And now what I want to do is I want to notch out the area in the upper ferrous limits 
where those steel coins are coming in at, which was the 60s. So I'm going to move that red segment over to the right in the area where I want to make the change. And I'm going to hit the edit button. And I'm going to remove that all the way to the top. And that's up to 79. That's a little high. I'm going to move this over a little bit. And then I'm going to go back, go to the previous segment and edit that one and move that one over slightly. There we go. Now let's go back and take a listen. Sounds pretty good. A nickel. A dime. That's not bad. Again, I'm, I'm doing it by hand. So I'm, the, sh the coin is shifting. It's not stationary like it would be in the ground. The one that's different is the toonie. Now the toonie seems to be appearing up in the lower uh, ferrous limits right in the corner down there. Take a listen to it. Coming in as iron 34 with a red line underneath. So we could change that as well. I want to find those two knees as well. So let's go here to custom one. We're going to move that segment go to this lower segment there. I'm just going to edit that and lower that slightly. I'm also going to edit the one beside it. So let's go back move over and that one as well and move that one over a little bit let's see if we can hear that tuning now so let's go back to our main detecting screen it sounds pretty good now it's on the very edge I could clean that up further if I want to just by going back in there and moving it over a little more like that. I think that would do it. Let's listen to it. Beautiful signal. And there we have it. We've created a custom profile for Ferris coins, specifically for our Canadian uh, steel coins. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on Ferris limits and stay tuned for more Manticore videos.